Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video we're going to continue work on the 1968 Wheel Horse Raider 9. This is now part 10 of this wheel horse project and it's definitely taking us longer than we expected and it's uh, turned into a bigger project than we expected. And the thing that's causing us problems isn't the difficulty of the jobs that we're doing but more of the unknowns uh, of what needs uh, changing and stuff and then getting hold of parts for those things. So what we're going to be concentrating on today is the rear axle, because that's where we think most of our unknowns are. A couple of things that we've spotted is, um, first thing, you can see there's quite a lot of uh, shaft left on the axle here, where the hub could be moved out. Um, and in previous videos, you may have seen that when we lift this up, it can't actually go all the way down, because... Uh, it hits the tyres on both sides. We put that wheel uh, on there to demonstrate this with the rear fender. Um, and we think that if we move the hubs out this inch, uh, then it would clear the tyre for more and then be able to stay up. Like in, I think, the previous video it was, we had to wedge a block under there uh, to keep it up. And since we've done... Since we washed the tractor, uh, we think we've seen signs of the rear axle uh, leaking. So we're also going to try and do um, some stuff about that. So we have also got some parts here to do uh, uh, to work with today. First of all, we've got this grommet that we found on an old wheel horse fender. Let's go there where the one is missing. We've got two uh, axle oil seals for the back axle, so that we can change them. And we've also got this uh, lift cable, generic lift cable, uh, for the lift, although we probably won't get to installing that today. First thing we've done is we removed the rear fender again, and we put on our replacement grommet. That was nice and easy. And then we got a bit carried away, mainly because we got slightly worried when we started taking the hubs off. So we've taken them off both sides. And this is badly worn on this end of the Woodruff key. Or the channel uh, slot bit where the Woodruff key goes into on this end. Uh, because obviously this was back here before. Which means it would have only been that bit that was getting worn down. The other end, however, in good condition. So hopefully we, when we move this out to the proper position, which is about there, uh, then we should be able to uh, have it so the Woodruff key is just on the not worn bit. And the Woodruff key, you can see the edge is completely taken out of it. That'll need replacing. However, on the upside, the other side is better. You can see there's minimal wear, and where there is wear on um, the slot in there, it is on the outside again. So that hub is definitely usable. The Woodruff key is in better condition on this side. And as you saw on both sides, is completely the axle is completely caked in oil. So the oil seals will definitely, definitely need replacing. So what we're going to do now... Uh, before we start taking anything more apart, is have a bit of a clean up. We 
we've had a brief clean up and we can now see uh, a bit of damage there and uh, the wood rough key as we saw before is badly warm the slot however is not too bad that should be fine and uh, much the same on the other side in terms of condition of that. Now, the last thing that we're going to do before we change the oil seals is drain the rear axle oil or whatever's left of it, which means undoing this Allen uh, bolt here next to the tow hitch. And since we will need to take the tow hitch off at some point anyway, we might as well take it off now so that it's not in the way. While we're doing this which means to take off the tow hitch and we're going to take off the slot hitch as well that does mean undoing this weird bracket uh which attaches to the slot hitch to hold it in place so someone could put this um drawbar on uh which has a bolt going through uh the rear axle there which has some strange size nuts on that we've managed to get a 16 mil socket onto. It's not a 16 mil because it's not metric and it doesn't appear to be imperial either. So that's helpful. Another good thing that we spotted on this tractor is that this pin, the tow hitch and slot hitch mount onto, uh, is not seized, which on a lot of these it is seized because obviously that isn't a moving part. Uh, things like the slot hitch just pivot on it so that's nice that that's not seized it makes things easier so we'll get all of this off and then we'll be ready to do the oil seals taking out the uh weird bolt that was going through there now so slot hitch is now mostly detached and we've taken the clip off this end of the pin so i'm now going to do and just gently uh, tap this out as far as I can. Got the tow hitch and slot hitch off now, as you can see there. And now we're just going to drain oil. I'll be able to do this by hand rather than having to use the Allen key for all of it. We've drained all of the rear axle oil now, and although uh, it didn't look too bad, it absolutely stings, which is why we've moved it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is put the new oil seal on. We've already taken the old one off, and it's here. What we usually like to do with these is uh, put a self-tapping screw into it and then pull it out with a pair of pliers to save damaging any of the surfaces or anything however we couldn't actually do that with this one so we had to kind of scrape it out with these um we've now put hydraulic oil over the shaft so that the new seal which is here uh goes on or is a nice slippery surface for the new seal to go on uh we probably won't record this because it'll probably be uh, quite difficult to do and we do not want to mess anything up we have the new oil seal on this side and we've wiped off all of the uh, hydraulic oil that we put on there to help us get it on and that was relatively painless now coming around to the other side uh, we've stopped we've also taken off the old one which was more difficult than that side but it's off now so it doesn't matter uh, we've started putting this on the shaft 
and I'm going to get my cameraman to put it into position properly, mainly so that I can't be blamed uh, if something goes wrong or the seal gets damaged in any way since they are pretty expensive SKF ones. Uh, so proper quality ones. So I'm going to let dad do this and then we'll come back to you once the seal is on. Having put the second new oil seal in, uh, we put some new rear axle oil in. So that's up to the level now. And we just took a quick break to go inside and order a few bits. First of, first being a 3 8 by 1 and 3 quarter inch bolt to go in that hole there uh, through the rear axle casing, replacing this thing, which is effectively just a bit of rod with threads on each end and two nuts. Not even sure why there's a, a flat blade screwdriver head there, but still, that's a monstrosity. And we also ordered two new wood rough keys, which although there's only one that is seriously damaged, we thought we would get a new pair. However, that's pretty much as far as we can go uh, with the rear axle. So we thought with our remaining few minutes of outside time today, we might have a look at the steering. Because although it is working perfectly that we know about, uh, it's always best to still check it. So what I'm going to do now is take off the battery tray. Uh, which means I'm doing these two bolts, uh, one there, one there. Having taken off the battery tray, we looked underneath it and uh, it was a bit fairy to say the least, which shows that uh, even though the degreaser did quite a lot, there were still some areas that we were struggling to get to. Another one was underneath the engine uh, mount bracket we have them both off now and you can see the undersides still have oil on this one you can see the bits where we managed to get with the degreaser but then there's still bits that we missed so i'm going to go around and just do a bit of gentle scraping to get the rest of this oil off We've cleaned up all of the chassis and everything now. You can see all the oil is gone. Uh, same for, all, for most of the steering and bottom of the battery tray and the underside of the engine mount. And can you believe uh, we got all of this off, having fully washed it with degreaser and everything, I think in the last video. So it shows how some areas can be so difficult to get to. Now, I think having it all cleaned up is a good place to end for next episode so that next episode we can um, focusing, focus on crossing off any unknowns to do with the front axle and steering because our new plan uh, was to sort out the rear axle and the front axle, get it back on wheels and then put the engine back on to finish the rebuild and then we can go from there. But that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.